welcome everyone to the 2020 Carol Biz Challenge. Woo! So here we go again. Is the entrepreneurial spirit alive and well in Carroll County? I think so, right? COVID-19 hits this year, but we get 29 amazing applications. We went and went down to the top five. They're all here today. You're going to get a chance to see them and to vote for them. How about a round of applause for our top five? They're awesome. I'm not going to spend a lot of time up here talking. I'm going to introduce the people who will be talking and maybe entertaining you a bit today. We have two amazing MCs who are going to carry the weight of the show on their very broad, capable shoulders. And they've been coming back, I think, almost every year. So our first MC is Mr. Jonathan C. Wheatman, attorney at law. John, where are you, John? Round of applause. Hey, thank you. Woo! Awesome, awesome. I'm, I'm at least six feet away from you right now, I One, think. One, two, three, four, yeah, five, five dollar foot long, six of them right Okay, we, we are working it out. Or you two, three, three foot subs. Yes, okay, that, that works. That still works too. Uh, and our next MC, this man, you can describe him as an enterprising gentleman, also, the creator and the founder of the Carol Biz Challenge, who sold this idea to me about nine years ago over a pint of Guinness and a cigar at Old Lord. And so we knew the way to my heart, and this has been our marquee event at the Chamber. So I want to introduce to you and then let these guys take it over, Mr. Jason Stambaugh. Jason. <laughs> little elbow action. That's all I have to say. I'm going to let you guys take the show. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Very good. Thank you. Hey. For the ninth annual Carol Bruce Challenge. Here, let's hear it. Let's let's hear it. Hear it. Wait. You notice something? Is it a little warm in here? It's more than that. You think so? Yeah. Um. I can't put my finger on it. I feel like it's right at the tip of my tongue. Like if it was a snake, it would have bitten us. I, 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 we're kidding. Uh, well, kind of. Mm -hmm. And I do mean everything. And by out of all of the biz challenges we've done, this is certainly the most unique biz challenge experience. It was really easy to get a parking spot when I got here. That, that was different. That is true. That, that is was very, different. Very, very true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pulled right in. So what, what do you think it is? What, what is it? I think it's we've got an empty house, John. We do have an empty house. This is the first time ever we've had virtually no audience. Ah. Uh, all right. Is this better? There we go. There we go. Good. Good. You can't start we over. Out of the, we got that out of the way. So you know what was wrong is my mic wasn't on. That's what was wrong. All right. That's different too. <laughs> so what we in house, we we've got our presenters, we have our, our astute technical crew. Uh, we have a VIP section that we'll present later. That's very exciting. Indeed. But otherwise the house is empty. Indeed, and as you can uh, see here, we, we've got some yeah. social distance. I think the yeah, entire yeah. crew uh, that is producing the show tonight is, is keeping their space and doing their best. And yeah. John, speaking of which, can you, um, can you inch over real, real quick for me? Just to your right a little We've been ways. doing this for years. You don't like me anymore? I, I don't, but we've got to keep our six feet. We're going to have to find a better way, right. a more innovative way, I think, to solve this problem. But Let's work on that. But, but I, I, think, I think I see some interesting folks in the audience, don't uh -huh. you? Even so, though we've got an empty house, yeah, yeah. if you look over here, who do we have in here, John? I can't quite see them. Well, yeah, the house lights are tough, but we do have, we have some VIPs with us tonight. Who? We got Governor Hogan. Yeah. We got here. We got yeah. we got uh, we got a presidential candidate. Yeah, uh, Joe, Joe Biden. Biden. And we Biden. got we got Donald Hello. Trump. That's looking good. And, and yeah. I see just to the right there, we've got Dr. Fauci. He's here to keep us Ooh. in line tonight. Now John. that, I, Dr. Fauci. That's uh, exciting and also humbling and also scary. He is here. I'm told to monitor uh, our COVID compliance there exactly. this evening. So we have Dr. Fauci here with us this evening uh, to take care of that. Thank you, doctor, for being here. And we appreciate all the VIPs and, uh, you know, uh, President Trump, we appreciate you taking a break from the RNC uh, convention to join us uh, here tonight. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for Well, that. he's been a regular, at least via Twitter. He, he, he has indeed. Uh, but this he is the indeed. first time we've had him in-house, so that's exciting too. <laughs> indeed. So we got our VIPs and John, so what, what do we got on tap tonight? What do we have to look forward to tonight? Well, we have five presenters, five finalists that are going to pitch their ideas live on stage. Um, we're certainly going to have one winner. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, 
But we also need to talk about this in an unprecedented time, and I guess that's what we've been doing, is going through that. So yeah. we are gonna have our live presenters here on stage. That part will not change. We still have a grand prize. Uh, we still have a People's Choice Prize. By the end of the evening, we're gonna know who the big winners are. And, and, and even though we don't have a live packed house, and I'd say that's probably one of my favorite things about this event every year, yeah. even we don't have that live packed house tonight, we are absolutely grateful to each and every one of you who are tuning in live to watch the show and to celebrate and support our local entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in addition to you all who are watching and have these entrepreneurs' backs, we do want to take a moment to acknowledge the sponsors who support this event and make it financially possible to put on an event at this scale and at this caliber in our community. So please take a look at the businesses who have entrepreneurs' backs here in Carroll County. Thank you to all the sponsors of the 2020 Carroll Biz Challenge. Our founding sponsors, 127 Creative, Carroll County Economic Development, Community Media Center, Magic, Miller, Resources for Entrepreneurs, Ting, our platinum sponsors, Advantage Internet Marketing, BGE, Gage Digital Media, Knorr Break, McDaniel College, Startup Portal, Town Mall of Westminster, and Cone Creative. Our gold sponsors, Carroll County Public Library, Brown, Schultz, Sheridan, and Fritz, The Entrepreneur Store, The French Twist, Lehigh Cement, NSWB Bank, Penguin Random House, Town of Mount Airy, The City of Tawnytown, the City of Westminster, WTTR Radio, our refreshment sponsors, The Food Chick, Furnace Hills, Julia Novas, Miscellaneous Distillery, Once Upon a Crumb, Velnoski Wealth Management Group, and M&T Bank. Thanks again for supporting innovation and entrepreneurship right here in Carroll County, Maryland. So, you want distance? We got we got distance. John, God, every uh -huh. stinking year you got to bring hockey into this mix. Yeah, what's it's that an for? Ta explain to me how that's going to help us. You come in my crease, you're in trouble. Oh you won't get within well, six John, feet. That is clearly not six well, sure feet. I've brought sure my client's no, no, tape no, no. measure. Let's six see. Feet. You got You got to step back a little bit. A little yeah. bit, eight more inches. No, no. See, I got I got five and a half feet of stick and a foot and a half. All of right, arm. all right. We'll, we'll let it pass, John. Just stay out of my crease. We got no problem. Okay. I'll respect right, you coming to the, paint. I'll respect the crease, but hey, we gotta all find right. a better solution. This this well, isn't all right. this isn't it. We're, we're lame. We got all these right. incredible innovative entrepreneurs, the best yeah, you can come up with yeah. is a hockey stick. All right. Well, this is what I had handy, but you're right. right. Tonight in entrepreneurship is all about innovation, so I bet we can come up with some more innovative ways. Well, we'll I'm see, with we'll you on see that. We can do. But you stay out of my crease. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so let's talk about this, the road to the finale. What it took to get here for our five finalists is a tremendous journey. Way back, February, March, April, May, uh, solicitations for applications were made. There were 29 businesses and potential businesses submitted applications to be here on this stage. The advisory board of about 10 people had to go through all 29 of those applications. And let me tell you, having been on that board way back when, that is the hardest thing to do. Um, sure, there might be a few that are not really developed ideas yet. You can get rid of a couple. Maybe there's a couple of shining stars that are kind of easy to put in the top five. But to get from 29 to five is a tremendous job, and kudos to the advisory board for taking care of that. Uh, that part of the journey being done, they winnowed it down to five. The five were told that they were going to be finalists here tonight, which is probably a moment of joy and terror. Uh, as they need to begin to prepare for the live pitch on this stage tonight. But it's a long, hard road to get here. Um, I would suggest that anybody who applies to be in the Carol Biz Challenge is already a winner. Uh, I know many people have heard this many times, but just going through the preparation of completing that very thorough application helps them refine their business ideas, clarify their business ideas, and making their dream a step closer to reality. 
Those that make it through have to even refine that further. There'll be no losers here tonight. Everybody will be better for having participated in the Carol Booth Challenge. And John, we've had nine classes go through this experience. We're talking hundreds of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. have participated in this competition over mm -hmm. the years. And there certainly have been some incredible successes and some incredible failures if yes. we look across uh, all those applicants. And so uh, failure is normal. It's expected mm -hmm. uh, in, in business. And so we don't necessarily celebrate failure, but failure mm -hmm. is, is part of the game. Yeah. Uh, but there are successes that happen. When they happen, we absolutely want to celebrate them. And I could not be more excited uh, to air an interview uh, with one of our 2015 Carol Biz Challenge winners. Uh, they have a really, really awesome, important update about their business. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Excellent. Let's see it. Well, hey, Carol Biz Challenge. I'm Steve Lowe, and I'm here with Ryan Herbsummer from Autumn Woods Collective, previously known as Autumn Summer. Uh, welcome, Ryan. Thanks for being here today. Uh, tonight, I wish we could be together in person, but uh, I feel like you've got a story to tell, and we just want to take a few minutes real quick to, to tell the story. So let's just go back to 2015. Uh, tell us about Autumn Summer, what that is was and what's going on there okay yeah first of all thanks for having me steve um it's been a crazy five years uh to think what the company looked like in 2015 and what it looks like now i was still working out of my parents basement and shed at that time uh, we have a warehouse up in the air park in westminster now so it's it's quite different um it looked like a pen making company at that time. We uh, thought that our avenue for growth was uh, adding products that other people made and just to become a big retail company. Um, we quickly realized that we're more of a manufacturing company uh, and our best bet was working with other companies to make whatever they needed and then they could sell it. And just viewing the growth as collaboration rather than competing with other people uh, and through that, we've made a great deal of partnerships. That's where Collective came from in our name originally. Um, and through just being able to ultra customize every single product that we make with lasers, CNC technology, everything like that, um, we've been able to grow. And it's been a crazy five years, but uh, I'm really happy with what it looks like now. So the reason that you're on this tape today is because you're actually biz challenge royalty you're you're actually famous you are you are in the 2015 carol biz challenge and you won both the grand prize and the people's choice award it was the first time that actually happened in biz challenge history and it's only happened once since could happen tonight we'll see um tell us how did that affect your business okay yeah that was it was an exciting night uh when we pitched at the biz challenge we originally wanted a laser and I put a up a picture on engraver, the screen, right? a laser engraver. Yeah, we wanted to customize our pens. Uh, that's what everyone was asking for. And that's what we knew we needed. Um, the behind the scenes story that I've mentioned to a couple people is that uh, we had actually already purchased the laser because we were too excited to have it for the Christmas rush. So um, luckily we, we were able to put that money to really good use. We found a space in January. The Biz Challenge I believe was in November uh, we found a space that we were able to lease starting in January and uh, move from a basement and a shed to a full space that was next door to where we have now. Um, that really allowed us to blow up. Uh, we were able to hire employees to bring into that space. We were able to add more equipment, better shipping technology, um, everything, correct, correct dust collection so that we weren't breathing in sawdust all day. Um, but that's been, I think that was definitely a big jump start for the company and I am extremely grateful for the Biz Challenge, um, just for the visibility from that, the connections that we made through the chamber, um, and then just having just a little bit of money um, to start out. I think that people think that you need hundreds of thousands of dollars or some big bank loan, but like a little investment like that is actually a huge deal. And what would you say your sales have been in the last five years? Um, so when we did the Biz Challenge, we were just about $50,000. Um, we've grown to about $2 million in sales, uh, full time with the company. Uh, so it's been a crazy, crazy couple of years, <laughs> it's awesome. multiple but it's years. even gotten crazier. And I know we got to wrap this up, but you are about to make a big, big move with this company. Tell us about that. Yeah. So this year we decided that, uh, it was the best move for the company to actually sell to a new owner. 
uh, we found a owner in Westminster that we're really excited about and um, we're currently under contract with, with them and to think that we I had originally put in $500 into the company in um, probably 2010 or a few years before the biz challenge um, and to think that we're selling for about a thousand times that now is just kind of mind-blowing and uh, that's awesome yeah. uh, one about 1,000 times your initial investment Yes, that is fantastic. Well, uh, Ryan, I want to thank you for, for being here today. Congratulations. What's next for you after the sale? Are you, what, you have you have plans for something now? I know I'm going to move to Arizona. I know I'm going to Phoenix. I know that I'm going to get some sunlight and uh, probably hike a few mountains or something like that. But awesome, man. I'm with help. Well, congratulations. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, one, one of our early Biz Challenge winners won both the Grand Prize and the People's Choice Award. He is now selling his company for 1,000 times his original investment. Uh, and if people want to check out Autumn Summer Woodcraft, Autumn Woodcraft, where do they go real quick? So it's autumnwoodsco.com. Awesome. That's going to be where you find us. If you forget that, just Google Autumn Woods. Google my name. You'll find it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, brother. Thanks for joining us. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know about you, but I love hearing what past participants, Absolutely. winners or not, uh, how they've been doing and what they've done with their businesses. It's, it's incredible. And, uh, and you know, we've, I've been here for everyone and so have you. And I remember when R Ryan pitched, yeah. he had one of the most engaging and heartfelt uh, pitches, one of the more unique ones I've ever seen. And it's no surprise to me that he's gone on to have that kind of success. So congratulations uh, to Ryan and we wish you the best of luck in your future uh, endeavors. Yeah, I think that's excellent. So with that being done, you cannot have a live business pitch contest without who? Our judges. Our judges. And we have some new judges this year, right? All four are brand new. We got new, I, I new faces, know. new names. It's going to be exciting. We have no idea what to expect. What yeah. types of questions they'll yeah. have. Four wild cards. Indeed. All right. Let's wonder hear who they let's, are. Let's hear about our judges. Helen Taylor. Helen opened the French Twist Cafe in historic downtown Sykesville on April 1, 2014. Helen was born and grew up in France before she moved to the U.S. after college at age 23. As a mother of four children, she was a stay-at-home mom for 14 years before she opened the French Twist. Helen was the very first winner of the Carol Biz Challenge People's Choice Award in 2012, and she served up over 315,000 crepes for hungry customers. Dave Palmer. Dave is co-owner of Brewery Fire in Tawnytown, Maryland. He discovered a passion for home brewing in 2008 and teamed up with Jesse Johnson in 2017 to turn their shared love for home brewing into more than just a hobby. The pair entered the 2018 Carol Biz Challenge and took home both the People's Choice Award and the Grand Prize. A year later, after countless hours of hard work, they opened the doors of Brewery Fire the first new brewery to open in Carroll County in eight years. Kim Fernandez. Kim Fernandez is the heart and CEO of three luxury eyelash and eyebrow salons, Girl Kin Lashes. In 2018, Kim opened her flagship location in Pikesville, Maryland, and soon added two salons in under two years, including her newest location in the Town Mall of Westminster. Girl Kim's mission is to provide an unmatched experience with gorgeous lashes and unbeatable customer service in a glamorously luxurious environment. Joe Dominic. A McDaniel College alum, Joe Dominic is the managing partner at Gage Digital Media and Maryland IT Solutions. With his expertise in marketing and technology, he helps hundreds of clients across several industries break through the clutter with creative marketing and technology solutions. In 2017, Joe was elected mayor of Westminster, Maryland, where he has spearheaded the city's water reuse project, the redevelopment of the town center, and has brought process and technology to the forefront of the city's operations. Please welcome the Carol Biz Challenge judges. All right. Look at... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, Mr. Wait. Cuban. Mark How Cuban. many times did we have to tell you that just because you're a Shark Tank judge doesn't mean you were qualified to be a judge yeah. of our local yeah. Carol Biz Challenge? Yeah. You, Security, got, get you, this you, guy out of here. He's got to work his way up to this. You're not. You're not ready for this. Security. 
Oh my gosh, Mr. Cuban. Oh, oh my oh, gosh, there he oh. goes. Ouch. Joe, we're, we're so sorry about that. I, I do forgive. Uh, I, Mark, you know, ha have a seat in the VIP section I, if you that's, could, Mr. That's, Cuban. That's going to leave a mark. That, that, might, that will literally leave a mark. That was a good one. All right, good. So now, now we're settled. We have our judges. Well, well, judges, we're so happy to have you all here for, for tonight's event. So just to go over a couple of ground rules. Uh, each finalist, and again, we have five, they will take the stage and they will have five minutes to give you their best business pitch. Hopefully they've answered as many of the questions as they possibly can in that five minutes, but we know you're gonna have a lot. So there'll be seven minutes of Q&A. Uh, you guys will have about five of those, but to accommodate audience questions, Folks will be texting me. My number will be on the screen. So those tuning in, you guys have a voice too. But again, seven minutes of Q&A, five are dedicated to you all, and about two will go to uh, our wonderful uh, mm -hmm. viewing audience. Mm -hmm. As if that wasn't exciting enough, we've mentioned prizes. Uh, the prizes are significant. This year in the ninth Carol Biz Challenge, the grand prize is valued at 5,000 plus, you wanna hear the plus? 5,000 cash plus uh, services, other things that they're gonna get, $21,601 is the value of our grand prize Who tonight. Who gave that $1? What is that, like a, like a candy bar? That was a uh, change them? under Mike's seat. Ah, I, I thought think, maybe it could've I been a Red Bull or something. I think that's what know. that was, but 21,601. Uh, and not to be outdone, and you heard perhaps earlier uh, that we have in our midst a, a, the first People's Choice winner who's going to have a fabulously successful business. The People's Choice Award tonight is going to receive $1,000 uh, and all the publicity they can handle. So there's going to be a lot of uh, cash and services and prizes handed out this evening, and I'm very excited about that. Well, let's, get, let's get our first entrepreneur on stage. Let's Sean. go. We, all right. Are we ready for pitch one? Our first presenter this evening is Eric Wendler of RetroStrap. Eric, please join us on stage. Thank you. Good evening, judges, and hello to all friends and family and everybody watching at home. I'm Max Wendler. And I'm Mason Wendler. And I'm Eric Wendler, and these are my two sons, and I'm the founder and creator of RetroStrap, the strap that comes back. My wife and I raised our two sons and our daughter in Carroll County. They, both, they all went to uh, Carroll County Public Schools. We still live in Carroll County, and I'm here tonight to go for the grand prize, and by winning that grand prize, that'll get me closer to my goal of being able to manufacture sell and distribute RetroStrap right here in Carroll County and create jobs in Carroll County. And you may be curious about how a product like RetroStrap can bring financial viability to Carroll County. And I wanna show you a very interesting slide and I don't have the clicker. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. So the Travel Goods Association estimates that every year uh, 10 billion dollars worth of travel cases and business bags are sold around the world. And that does not include backpacks or luggage items. It includes travel bags, sports bags, computer bags, and business briefcases. And many of those items have one common problem associated with them. And that is they have the old fashioned floppy, sloppy looking shoulder strap. And if you're anything like me and thousands of other people, you've had problems with this old-fashioned strap. As you can see, when you put it on a chair or a table, it hangs down. Uh, when you carry it with you, it drags on the ground, gets dirty, creates a tripping hazard. And then as you can see on all the bags we have here, the straps laying on the ground, getting dirty, creating a tripping hazard, looking unprofessional. And I actually travel with a bag quite a bit, and my son Max is going to show some of the problems that are associated with the uh, shoulder strap when you travel. If you put the bag on the conveyor belt in the airport security line, uh, it hangs down. They usually make you take it off, tuck it away, do something with it. If you put your bag um, in the airline seat in front of you, again, the straps on the dirty floor, gets in the aisle, creates a tripping hazard and causes a problem. And if you put your bag in the overhead bin, again, the strap hangs out, you gotta tuck it in, take it off, and do something with it. And after researching, trying to find a solution, I could not find one, so what does any good entrepreneur do? They create their own solution. 
and I created RetroStrap. It's a patented product, and as you can see, it's a fairly simple product. It's a shoulder pad that has retractors built into the shoulder pad that pull the strap back when you're not using it. And we're going to show you how easy right now it is to use RetroStrap. You just simply use the bag, keep the bag that you want to use, get rid of your old-fashioned strap, use the standard clips that come with RetroStrap, clip it onto your bag, and as you can see, Looks like a standard shoulder strap, acts like a standard stro uh, shoulder strap, but the beauty of it is when you're all done, let the strap go, goes against the bag, stays off the floor, stays off the ground, stays out of your way, looks more professional, and as you can see, stays right against the bag. And Max is gonna show you the problems it solves when you travel as well. So again, the airline uh, conveyor belt, the strap doesn't hang down, the seat in front of you, the strap stays against the bag, and then when you put it in the overhead bin, the strap stays against the bag as well. Um, and uh, so as you can see, I have prototypes already uh, built. Um, I have a logo, website, tagline, and it's a, already a proven uh, viable product. And as you can see too, it goes on any type of bag, almost any type of bag. Uh, not just a computer bag or a business bag. It can go on an equipment bag, a photography bag, business bag, and we even have here a large sports bag. And again, you can see large bags, it works fine. Put the strap down, it goes against the bag and stays there. Um, I do anticipate two revenue streams with, uh, with retro strap. Oh no. The 2020 Carol B. <laughs> and uh, two revenue streams with retro strap, and that's licensing and then retail or online sales. And by, again, by winning uh, the challenge tonight, I can use the funds from the challenge to create my first production line that I can sell and make RetroStrap available to the world, get the product out there, and be successful here in Car Carroll County. Thanks for your consideration, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I have a question. Before we get to you're going to take the first question because you were eager. But a quick note to the audience who's watching, please text in your, your questions. You're very, very quiet right now, but do please text your questions. We'll get to those. With that, Alain, you were the first. So we're going to let you be first. Take the first question. Um, well, first of all, it's very clever. I like, like the product. Great. Um, I have, so how much are you going to set it for? And do you have only one length? And one type. Yeah, it's one, 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 pro, one length right now, one size. And I've tried, again, I've tried it on multiple sizes yeah, of bags, and it does seem to work on even on larger bags. Ironically enough, the retractors keep uh, the tension and keep the, the strap against the bag. So, yeah, one size. And I anticipate it somewhere around the $20, $25 range. And it may have to be initially large uh, or yeah. a little bit more than that just to cover initial manufacturing costs because they tend to be higher for initial runs. So what is your cost right now and how many do you have to produce in order to reduce the cost price? Yeah, uh, well I don't really have a cost. I'm still working with a manufacturer now for a production run and we're working out the cost. Um, I, I think it's going to be somewhere in the $20 range maybe and then I'm your like... Cost? My, my, my cost initially, because again, this is, it's, it's not at scale yet, okay. and there's a fair amount of handwork and things that uh, need to happen to get the strap together, and until I find, and again, the reason why I'm here, I'm looking for partnerships, manufacturers, people that can help me uh, get that cost down through efficiencies and things like that. And, uh, and potentially help me, so. Are you considering taking it overseas to reduce the cost? Yes, yeah, I'm actually talking with a partner right now who does have those capabilities and they're gonna work up an estimate for me. I'm a little wary of that, especially with all, everything that happened with COVID and a lot of companies are reshoring now instead of offshoring. And so I'm very interested, again, if I can find a partner here locally that I can control, monitor, quality control, it's really important because you know, it's, it's like anything else. It's your baby. You want to make sure that you're not sending out bad product that doesn't work and then you get bad reviews and things go sideways there. But, uh, but yeah, I'm definitely, uh, that, that's an option, but not, not an option I really want to do. But. 
So Thank you. you. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so can you tell me about your user uh, tester um, process a little bit? Yeah, so you're looking at three of us right, right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've, I've had the strap I have on there, on my bag has been on used for three years, traveled around the world, uh, done quite a bit. Our, my son's used his at the office. The photography bag has been around the world. The strap's been used. So uh, from, from that standpoint, um, it's been tested. I, I don't have a broad test base. Okay, so no feedback or anything? Based um, I mean, I, I've talked to people. You know, my, my feedback has been traveling and seeing people with all the problems I, I told you about and okay. just getting reinforcement from them. You know, I've doubted myself over the years. It's like anything else. You're like, okay, is this a good idea? Mm -hmm. And then I'm in the airport and I'm like, you know, you see straps everywhere, people tripping over stuff, and just, and that validates the user model as well, too. And I've talked to so many people, I show them the idea, they're like, yeah, I get it, because I've had the same thing happen to me many times, you know, as well. And okay, is there a weight limit? Um, so that's a good question. The strap itself is one continuous loop of okay. strap. Right. So there's no cut in the strap or anything. So whatever the, the weight rating of the strap is, that'll be the weight that it can hold. So uh, a duffel bag that has 25 or 30 pounds in it, okay. if the strap is weighted for 75 or 100 pounds, it won't be a problem because it's not the retractors that hold the bag, it's the strap. The retractors, their only function is to pull the strap back in. Okay, thank you. Yep. So you, you asked half my question already. <laughs> uh, curiosity on, on market minds. research and, and where you're, um, I guess, determining that there's a need for your product. Um, my follow-on question to that is, um, what materials are being used, what's the life expectancy of the materials, and how will they hold up versus the lifetime of the bag you attach them to? Yeah, it's a good question. So again, my strap, that specific strap on my bag has been on my bag for three years, okay. continuously. And I've used it 20 times a day, I've used it 100 times a day at various times. And it's been through airports, uh, trains, I've ridden the metro, you know, it's just, uh, and gets used constantly. And I know Mason's photography bag as well. And the tension stays con consistent? Tension stays the same. And, and you know, the, the retractors, that's <clears throat> what they're made to do. They're made to, to retract thousands of times. So I, I, fortunately, I've not had, a, had a, uh, an incident or a problem with, with mine yet. So. And uh, in our current economic condition where supply chains are being disrupted, um, are there any materials that you're using now that are going to be more difficult to source? No, I mean, it's, it's the straps, standard nylon, the shoulder pad materials, fairly standard. Even the retractors that I'm using are fairly standard as well, too. Uh, there, there is some discussion around maybe customizing those at some point, but as of right now, the prototypes I had can be used with standardized retractors as well. Would you be able to offer a life warranty if it's... Um, I've thought about that, terrible. and I, I, I think I'd be comfortable with that because, again, based on... If your margins are good enough. What's that? If your margins are good enough. Yeah, to... yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't see a problem with that with a warranty, you know, because, again, I've, I've had enough comfort level and use, and uh, I, I haven't had a problem mm -hmm. at all. Excellent. Uh, last question to Joe, yeah. and then we'll take an audience question. So I, um, you mentioned two revenue streams. Yes. Um, you know, direct, direct sales and then and licensing. Yep. Um, but it's likely if you get a licensing deal, they're going to ask for exclusivity. Are you going to be able to? So you mentioned you've been doing this for at least three years. Yeah. Right? Are you going to be able to give your invention, your baby up, and see total control just to license the product? Well, I, I'm, I am open to that for a certain period of time. So the licensing agreement you know, would be if somebody would say, and, and you know, I, I actually do have a licensing partner right now. I, I, I am talking, I have a partner up in New York City right now that I have a licensing deal, but it's only a two-year deal. And they're, they want to put the, the strap on their bag that they're creating. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to make it exclusive in perpetuity for anybody. Um, it's initially, this, this company was really interested, and I did give them the, the licensing deal exclusivity. It actually runs out next year. So, okay, so yeah, so I mean, I'm looking at it, and um, obviously, um, if you license it, you're licensing the mechanism. If, you, if you're direct to sales, you, people are going to ask for different colors, different styles, maybe even different materials. You're going to have to have a whole, a whole range. Uh, I think about the bags that I own, and I would need three different straps that are three different colors for it to look right. So, um, I, I, but, you know, I know it's hard to give up your baby if it's, if it's your Well, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, you know, to Helen's point, you know, the margins and everything right now, black is where I need to be, and it's most functional for... <clears throat> 70% of the bags that can be used. So 
uh, but I'm definitely open to other other variations of it um, at some point to thank make you. it Th more thank, viable. Thank you so much. Always have, uh, that's all we have time for okay. tonight. Audience, we're going to get you next time with the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks right. for your time. Very good. Very good. The 2020 Carol Biz Challenge is proudly sponsored and produced by 127 Creative. Tonight's live streaming broadcast is provided by the Community Media Center. Oh man, hold on here. You uh, gotta, what, what, you gotta what, measure what, one. What you gotta you, measure twice. Cut once here, doing? just to be sure. We got six feet. What? John, I told you I was gonna be innovating. All right, bear with me for one moment. I, I'm Gosh, sorry, everybody. I don't. This won't. This won't take I, long. I, well, let me. I'll, I'll help. This won't. There we go. Right. Just like that. And uh, mm. hold on, hold on. I have to do a quick modification here. While okay. I'm doing this, you go ahead and uh, you, you, you take uh, this belt uh, yeah, and get this that little velcro me? around it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, you know what this is, right? Yeah, you, you got this. All right, All right so I, this I put this on. That's exactly right. You put that on, you put that Velcro strap around it, and I think, John, this will help us finally Finally. Oh, 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 all right, all right, all right, all right. There we go. All right, I think I'm starting to see okay, it. I'm innovating in real time. People, you know, here we go. All right, that's better. Here we go. All right, so this, this goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. There we go. Uh huh. Oh, here I'm we go. Catching on. Here we go. We're gonna loop this around. Uh, You've been getting right. a little close to me, John. I think this will work. What do you think? All right, so. Uh, what, uh, what, so what, what do we call this invention? The shaft? Uh, what, I, what you, I, I, I tell you what, I'm not know. calling it. What? Pole dancing with Jason. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, right. I, well, I think we need to work, work, work right, on what, that name okay, a little bit. So, but I, I, I just don't think this is uh, good enough for a market. This prototype, not nearly as sweet as the retro No, strap. no, you're getting ahead of yourself. It only comes in one color. Any investors? Any, and who wants to write a big check? Anybody? Yeah. Senator Biden? No, uh, nobody, nobody's pass, raising their hand. All right, John, I think we, we could do better, but this was a nice, this was a nice try. I, I appreciate the This is a good prototype, spirit. but uh, with that, we're pleased to welcome our second participant tonight, Jenna Shriver, who will be presenting Together Studios. All right, Jenna. All right, now, but who goes? I, I don't know. Let, let's go this way. Let's go. All right. We got to go this way. All right. Ow. Hello, thanks for having me. I'm Jenna Shriver, and I'm the founder and CEO of Together Studios, LLC. I was born and raised in Carroll County, still live in Carroll County, and I'm proud to have Together Studios in Westminster, Maryland. I think all of us... It went through all of my slides, of course. Okay. I think all of us would agree that the world we're living in today is vastly different from the one that we were living in just six months ago. We were all facing new problems and obstacles that beg to be solved and overcome. I have a core belief that as successful entrepreneurs and leaders, we see opportunity in every obstacle. Businesses exist to solve problems and make life better for others. Those solutions come from the dreams and hard work of entrepreneurs and their teams. This is exactly what the Carol Biz Challenge celebrates and supports. And with the same heart for supporting entrepreneurs, I see that there are solutions lying dormant in half or more entrepreneurs in Carroll County because they don't have access to or can't afford the resources that they need to start and grow. So I want to share with you some challenges that female entrepreneurs can face so I can set the stage for the solutions. Now, many of us are aware that it's harder for women to start and grow and sustain a business. It's harder for women to attain funding. That's a pretty well-known fact. And so the solution, I took my struggles and I turned them into solutions for other female entrepreneurs. Where there was a problem of women not being able to afford the resources they need to start and grow their business, the solution is Together Studios. Together Studios is a female-focused co-work space, <laughs> studio, and community with the resources needed for the creative entrepreneur. We firmly believe that we are better together, and our modern vision is a workplace where we can collaborate, create, and have community as a small business owner. I notice the need among local female entrepreneurs for a professional inspiring space to go to work out, outside of their homes or coffee shops with reliable and fast internet. Creative resources, such as a fully stocked studio for photography or video, a professional space meet with clients, customers, and vendors, 
and trusted education to grow themselves and their businesses in a community who encourages sports and champions each other. My target market is women who own creative businesses in Carroll County and nearby surrounding area, 18 through 50, 65 in age, in industries you can see listed here. Monthly operations will be around $2,000 once we reach our full lease payments. For Capital Startup, it's come 100% out of cash from po out of pocket from my husband and I and supplies given to me by others. Our revenue model is membership-based combined with rentals of the studio, meeting room, equipment, and educational workshops. We have five membership options that suit members' needs all the way from just a few hours a week all the way up to a full-time week. This is really great because it helps us to be able to maximize the amount of time that we can use our space as well as keep our, our membership options affordable, which I consider a win-win. Now to cover costs, my minimum goal for members is one full-time, five premium, one evening only, eight basic, and ten interim members. This will cover expenses once we reach our full uh, amount of our lease, and it will then leave plenty of room for our profit from renting out the meeting room, studio, equipment, and workshop ticket sales, as well as any memberships above our minimum need. Now, to be profitable, our goal is to rent the studio and the meeting room at least 25% of the time, and this would enable us to bring in a, a minimum profit of $1,120 a month, which I can answer more of that later if you have questions about that. These are our rates for the studio and for the meeting room. Now, if we were to win, we would use our winnings for outside signage at our location, for more ergonomic and comfortable chairs, a desktop with software for creative entrepreneurs, TV with built-in camera for virtual meetings in our meeting room. If we were to also win the People's Choice Award, we would use it for marketing, such as to hire a specialist for Facebook and Instagram ads to reach our local target market and for printed marketing materials. Now in closing, I want to say to the panel and to the audience, uh, if you choose Together Studios, you'll not be just supporting one entrepreneur's dream business and future, you'll be supporting countless entrepreneurs' dreams, businesses, and futures in the Carroll County area and beyond. Thank you so much for your time. It's great job. Right, very good. Very nice. I, I, I think since we're talking physical space, I, I think, Kim, you, you've recently opened uh, a, you know, a, a chain, actually. So I think yes. you're perfect for the very first question. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Um, and a great idea. So can you talk about the type of technology that you have in your studio right now? Are you referencing equipment that they can rent? Or... Yes. OK, so we have studio equipment such as backdrops and equipment for photographers and videographers in our studio, which includes camera equipment and things of that nature and lighting. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank yeah. you. And mm -hmm. how are you planning on marketing to your ideal audience? We've been using Facebook ads and Instagram ads and uh, encouraging word of mouth referrals through a network that I already have created in the past 10 years of my entrepreneurship journey here. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. So. Can I? Yeah, I, fire away. <laughs> so you said that the main source of revenue would be your membership, um, and then renting other things. But do you? First of all, is it open only for women? It's is female focused. Female. We are not. We can't legally. We can't turn away anyone, and I wouldn't want okay. to. But we are are geared towards creating solutions for female entrepreneurs. And. What are you, do you have possibility to offer lunch? Are you going to have food truck come in and maybe, um, you know, provide lunch once a week, twice a week? Or can you, any other revenue this way and maybe take a percentage? Or um, mm -hmm. I just lost my question. Hold on. That's okay. And that I can see, you know, <laughs> uh, oh, daycare. Day for women who work from home. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's not a good time to talk about this, but yeah. um, is it something you can expand to to have a small daycare so the moms can go work while the kids are being That is care? absolutely an excellent question. It's something that I am looking into since every all of this is happening right now. Uh, I would love to be able to connect with maybe a local daycare in the downtown Westminster area. That would be a great solution to have a partnership there. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I don't have enough space at our venue to mm -hmm. actually accommodate them on location but maybe in the future. Okay. Yes. How much sure. space do you have? We have around 1,400 square feet. And how long have you been open? We have been open since the beginning of July. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jenna, so yes. 
1,400 square feet is um, it's probably a good start. Yes. But um, it's probably not where you want to end up. Correct. Uh, in terms of scaling, mm -hmm. um, your plan as of today, we know they change. Uh, would it be to open up a second location or would it inevitably be to open up a larger location in the same area? So it, it could go one of two ways. It could, it could go app opening up an additional location in the Carroll County area or it could be moving our location to a larger space. I do plan to stay where I am for at least two years to be able to really solidify and be profitable before considering scaling. But um, my, my larger vision for Together Studios is that we would have additional locations in other cities. And what mm -hmm. could your max profit be in this current location? About $4,500, $5,000 low estimate because I like to be on the safe side. So is that profit above and beyond what you would pay yourself as a salary or does that include that? That, that includes that, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, before we get to you, Dave, we're going to get you a question, but I want to sneak an audience in. We sure. totally stiffed them the last time. So uh, a couple of rapid fire questions. Will your space have crazy fast fiber internet? Is yes. Right? Okay, there we go. Um, and second rapid fire question, is the space uh, open and accessible 24-7? 24-7, Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday, perfect. Yes. Dave, on to you. Uh, just, just a quick question that I don't feel was addressed in the pitch. Sure. Uh, why you? I understand the business model. What makes you the person to do it? Oh, because I have a really huge passion for female entrepreneurs to help them to start and grow their businesses. I, I love to be able to encourage other, other women. That's, that's part of my, my niche with Together Studios. Whenever they join, they don't just get the resources. The, they get the resources there, and one of those resources is me. And it's, your professional background being? Uh, 12 years as a wedding and portrait photographer in Carroll County. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Are you going to be able to offer classes or Zoom classes that will provide a revenue? Yes. For, I mean, offer the people that rent to offer classes with all their talents? Yes. So part, part of the, um, the structure is that we would offer education to help them grow. We have already hosted one learning workshop, and we are planning on hosting more. And we're also hosting community events to be able to build that sense of community, whether you are a member or you're not a member of Together <clears> Studios, to just help build the female entrepreneur community in Carroll County. Okay. Mm -hmm. Panel. Do you provide good coffee? So, Sorry. Oh. Well, we do provide coffee, but I, I, <laughs> it's on my uh, agenda to work with networking with someone else that okay. provides great coffee. <laughs> when, when you say you'll host like learning like seminars, um, yes. are, they, are they for your tenants or are you talking about, or maybe maybe this is just an idea, mm -hmm. of having your tenants hold those seminars for other local businesses? Can that would certainly be a value add for your tenants if you help the market that. But yes. I didn't yeah. know if you were you were considering that or not. Both. Okay. The answer is both. Yes. I, I'm hosting some, but then I'm also looking to collaborate with other others who are experts in certain areas. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What type of feedback have you received so far with your concept? I've, re I've received really great feedback that it's something that's needed, that it's wanted. Um, of course, it's a little challenging to get started during this time with the restrictions and people's comfort levels being in person right now. But I believe that Together Studios is a solution moving forward, that it's going to be needed even more once restrictions are lifted. There's so many women that are starting businesses in this season because of losing jobs or just deciding okay, I don't want to do that job anymore. I want to do my own thing. And so I believe that Together Sue is a great solution for them to be able to start and grow there. Thank you. You're welcome. We've got a fast question, and we'll let the judges think about one final question. Fast question. Uh, the audience said that they, you glossed over the membership rates uh, yes. too quickly. Sounds like somebody might want to rent some space, so they were asking again what were the membership rates were for the space. The membership rates are listed here. They can also find all the information they need at our website at togetherstudios.com. The membership rates, we have intro at the, as low as $45 a month, basic at $80 a month, evening only, $104, premium, $124, and full-time at $320. Excellent. Well, I think... That's all we have time for, so Running thank you time. so much. Yep, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you, guys. The Carroll County Business and Employment Resource Center is your local connection for all of your employment and training needs. We provide complimentary recruitment, retraining, and retention programs to help build your workforce.
Burke helps you find the most qualified employees by posting jobs at our center and online, identifying the right candidate for your position, offering skills training, and hosting on-site job fairs. We make connections that work. Contact us today. Hi, I'm Graham Dodds, the Executive Director of MAGIC. Now what if I told you that right now under my feet is the fastest internet in the entire state of Maryland moving at the speed of light and right here in the middle of Carroll County. Well come take a look. That's what's happening here with the Westminster Fiber Network only in the city of Westminster powered by Ting. Now the reason why MAGIC exists is because of this fiber network and we're here to help entrepreneurs like yourselves succeed and bring your visions to life. So congratulations to all the finalists of the Carol Biz Challenge. We look forward to supporting you at Magic. Connect with me here at my email address or website. John, I well, think these are a little bit, a little bit better. I, I figured our last was a little, it, it was a little too raw, a little, little too rough. I figured these were a bit more refined and possibly work better in water as well for social well, distancing. What do you think? As my mama used to say, innovation is as innovation does. <laughs> so I don't, uh, suspenders would be good. I, I, I know. Uh, I think this, you've got multiple ways to affix it for space. But John, I, I, I think it's, it's not quite big enough. I like the inflatable route, yeah. though. Lots of, lots of capacity, lots of potential. There's still a good four feet of honor system here between us. I think next time we're really going to blow them away. Yeah. 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 Boom. Boom. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's live TV, Jason. We can't go back. <laughs> That's already out there. All right. All right. It is time for our third presenter, and I want to be very, very clear. They are not trivalent. That's an inside joke. Uh, they are covalent spirits. We would like to welcome now Jennifer Young and Drew Cockley to the stage. Welcome. So hi everybody. Did you know that Westminster used to have a distillery? Every day when I walk down Main Street, I look up and I see that Sherwood Tower. And it reminds me of when distilling used to have such a vibrant part of our local economy. And that's since faded away. You know, Jen, if we make whiskey out of beer, do any of you guys know a brewer? And you know what? Education's right up my alley. It is, it is. Do you guys know Drew Conley? Drew was a former principal of Sensei High and 20-year Carroll County resident. And he has the oh-so-difficult task of being a master chief taster. That's right. And this is Jen. She's our chief thinker. She's an MIT grad. That means she's really smart. She's also an entrepreneur. She owns her own consulting firm. And she's been running a, a whiskey tasting group for the last five years. Well, Jen, now's the right time to get into graft distilling. It's a $5 billion industry that's growing at over 30% for the last four years. And the economic impact of craft distilling is over a billion dollars a year in Maryland alone. Market research shows people want to spend their money on experiences. They want to be able to laugh, have fun, and learn something new. 
And not only that, $18 billion comes to Maryland every year for tourism. Frederick County sees over $400 million of that money. They focus on downtown and the craft beverage industry. We just want to see some of that money being spent right here. How cool would it be for us to be that third point in that triangle? That'd be really cool. Add in the local wineries and the breweries. We also can have a more vibrant craft beverage tourism scene here in Carroll County. Take some of that money from Frederick County, keep the money in Carroll County. Not only that, we believe we have the right approach. Our name is based on a chemistry term, quite simply meaning forming bonds through sharing. And that is the essence of covalent spirits. We want people to connect and bond through something shared like a drink. We're going to be making different vodkas, gins, whiskeys, liqueurs. Come buy a bottle to go, stay, have a cocktail. Come share a memory. Our tasting room will have lots of unique events. Perfect place for your own private gathering. Come and have fun, let us do all the work. And lastly, let's connect through a shared purpose. Philanthropy is a big part of all my businesses, and this will be no different. Man, this looks really good, doesn't it? It's a lot of work. Well, we're not afraid of hard work. And if you can see from our to-do list, we've been checking things off, and we're set to open next year. And not only that, when we looked at our financials over the fa over after the first year, we're going to start turning a profit. But what gets really excited is look at our three- to five-year projected revenues. It is cool. All right. Are you all excited? Still excited? Well, we are very, very excited. I've been spending the last five years gearing up for this moment and taking classes with different organizations, even working for a year at another distillery, just so we can prepare to bring you this. This is a rendering of what it will look like. Our equipment is being built right now and what it might look like walking down Main Street. And everybody's probably wondering where on Main Street is this going to be? We know that building. 118 East Main Street. We are taking over this building, working with the guys at Atlas Premier Realty to turn this into this. Come and have, share that drink, share that memory, share that purpose, day or night. We want to be another anchor on Main Street. Pull in some of that billion dollars of economic impact money to Carroll County. We also want to one day be a brand beyond Maryland and put Westminster back on the map for distilling. We are Covalent Spirits. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It only makes sense we're talking about it. Yeah. For Dave, you, oper you, wrote, you wrote a brewery for you to take the first question. I appreciate that. No. Uh, I'll try not to hog all the time being the, the person on the panel who's in the craft beverage industry. Uh, you spoke very briefly toward the end about working at distilleries. Yes. Um, as someone in the craft industry, I know that you can't home distill. Nope. So could you speak to what experience you gained at those distilleries that you can bring to actually open your own? Sure. Um, over the last couple of years, it's been a combination of classes, workshops, shadowing, head-on training, and so forth. So for about a year, I worked at another distillery, running their tasting room, helping out with the production runs, and really learning how to do machinery and learn how to do the malt mashes and all that good stuff. A lot of the training that I've done has also been at other distilleries, same kind of thing too. We cannot home distill the way you can home brew, um, but you can definitely spend time within a distillery and learn all that. And this is also where I'm brushing off my biology and chemistry background from when I was in college. I can find time my parents and using my college degree. <laughs> uh, so those are the kind of things too. And also running these tasting groups, a lot of it is about understanding someone's palate, right? So there's the science part and the art part. And so um, the science part is the distilling, the art part is understanding people's palates, what they like. And we're actually going to um, share a little sample of um, something that one might make in a distillery because we did not make it at a distillery. But we are going to share with you a gin infusion that we made at home. And uh, I just have one more, then I'll happily hand over to the rest of the panel. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of the growth in the craft spirits industry is in uh, the whiskey market. Yes. And um, there's a long wait from opening your doors to selling whiskey. Correct. So is there marketability in gin, vodka, and the faster spirits to stay afloat while you're building your bourbons, your single malts, et cetera? Like, what, what are you going to do in the meantime? 
Yes, we think there is, and that's why we want to kind of create more creative flavors uh, and cocktails. And our business model, part of it is the manufacturing side, the other part is the hospitality side too. So we also want to create the space where people can come together, whether it be 20, 30 people, uh, come and hang out. It has a different vibe than just a manufacturing piece. But one of the first things we're going to put into the barrels is our own whiskey. And I'm a big whiskey fan, so we are, I'm dying to do that myself. Jennifer, mm -hmm. in my role as mayor, I, I look at a lot of um, uh, like how, how the landscape's going to change for Main Street. So looking at uh, Main Street communities and retail um, that's struggling right now and will continue to, to, that landscape will change over time, my belief is that Main Streets are going to be um, repopulated with, uh, with, with experience. So can you tell us, other than coming in and getting a drink, how, mm -hmm. what can we expect from the experience of walking sure. into Cavalian Spirits? Sure, this is where I tap into my 15 years of event planning background, <laughs> and uh, I love planning events. So there are a lot of different ways to do it. The, one is the traditional pop-up events, you know, have a little art gallery, have some music venue and so forth, have themed events, bring in food trucks, all those kind of things. But we also want to do something a little different where this idea of create your own uh, blend and create your own uh, blended whiskey or blended gin, that is something that's very different. So that's an experience that not only you're going to learn, but also kind of have something that you can't get anywhere else. We also want to uh, partner with any other type of value add businesses. So partner with Race Pace and do uh, quarterly uh, rides around the beautiful country roads of Carroll County. You know, partner with Run More and do runs. Partner with Downtown Yoga to do yoga things. So there's a lot of different things we want to do to add to that experience. And uh, like I said, this is where we kind of tap into our our event hat that we have. And we really want to create a place for folks to come to Main Street, come and stay and hang out and really have a good time. Did you buy or did you, are you renting the building? We are renting the building. Okay. How large is it? Uh, it is about almost 4,000 square feet. The first part of the bay is about 2,000. The second part is about 1,500 or so. And then we also have 20 spaces in the back for parking and lots of space for potential patio room also. And I have one uh, question about uh, what kind of grain do you use and are you going to source locally? Of course. We've already been talking to a couple of local farmers about it, about looking at local rye. I heard today that there are a couple of farmers that are trying to grow sorghum, which is something I want to actually uh, make into a whiskey. So we definitely will. One thing I love about Carroll County is all the farms that are here, and I really would love to tap into that for the corns and the rides and the weeds and the sorghums and so forth, as well as the different fruits and vegetables we might use. Uh, we played around with a pepper-infused vodka at home, and we just went to the farmer's market and bought the peppers. And we made a peach cello at home, and we just went to Boggers and bought a bunch of peaches. So we definitely want to tap into local as much as possible. We've got some audience questions. Sorry, can we'll no, get up to you. Let's do some, John, we had a couple audience questions. Yeah, we, we did. Uh, not surprising, the distillery prompted audience questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> question number one is regarding your, your logo. Somebody believes that it looks perhaps like yin and yang, and they're wondering what the genesis was for the logo. Oh. That's a really sharp logo, isn't it? Is it is a very sharp logo. <laughs> it's a shout out to our graphic artist. Uh -huh. <laughs> So uh, we wanted a logo that had a lot of meaning to it, and we don't have the time to explain all the different meanings around it, but uh, we want something simple that translated well, but also kind of carries some symbolism. So the Covent Spirits, it's a C and the S kind of put together. Um, I'm a big chemistry nerd, and the dots for me represent the bond, the covalent bond, show me electrons. And I want to make sure that was there too. But yes, it has a bit of a yin and a yang feel, which, no coincidence, my last name is Yang. And it also has a look of perhaps a sharing and fluidity. So this logo, the cool thing is that each person you look at it again and again, you see mm -hmm. more things to it, which is to me kind of, kind of fun and awesome. But we, we love it. Okay, awesome. and then one more, more direct audience question. Will you have food? We will have food through partnerships. We will not be providing our own food, and this is where we talked about engaging with local partnerships. We are so excited about having local fruit trucks, having some pop-up uh, experiences. We also want to do this idea where we uh, have someone, either in a, maybe a golf cart or a bike, and do a delivery service. So folks in our distillery, you can bring your own food in if you want to, order from a distillery, we'll go get it for you and bring it back to you. And it's just as if you have a restaurant there. So we definitely want to have food there and create, like I said earlier, a space that people want to come and just hang out and kick back and enjoy life a little bit. So Kim, final question to you. So great. Your vision is, is pretty intriguing, very ambitious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep in fact that the environment where we are right now, mm -hmm. how has your business change shifted 
on, um, you know, based on with you opening September 2021? And have you leveraged any, um, you know, uh, benchmarking of current distilleries uh, that are open right now? Yes. Fast answer. Oh, yes, we, we are. <laughs> Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Oh, I know. It was. Yes, we have. <laughs> That's all. It's out of time. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so all right. much. All right. Thank you very Great much. Great job. Right. Presentation. Thank you. Great job. Great job. All right. Now another video from one of our wonderful sponsors. What I have found over my many years is that most entrepreneurs are just not good business people. They need to learn that skill. But what they bring is the passion and the ideas and the excitement, which is awesome. And that's where Carroll Community College comes in with its unique Miller Resources for Entrepreneurs program. We offer everything an entrepreneur needs to get its business started and to keep it up and running. How to start a business, how to write a business plan, all the way up through getting your business marketed on social media. So often business owners are great at their craft, but they're not great at the business of their craft. Me taking the opportunity to embrace all that Miller had to offer was me engaging that side that wasn't the strong side, the business side of running a business. After 25 years of working in healthcare food service industry for corporations, it's kind of scary to go out on your own. Miller helped me organize all my random thoughts into a business plan and help identify where I needed to be. Miller provided the structure that I needed in order to make not only a short-term plan, but a long-term plan. Before I knew it, I had a company. Miller is a great resource to help you come up with how to approach the next step in your growth as a business. Congratulations to the contestants and let the competition begin. Wow, I'll tell you what, John, I think we have found the ultimate social distancing device. Didn't even knock anything over. I, I, I can't see, I can't hear, and hey, <laughs> they work, don't they? This is the first year I'm not afraid of falling off. <laughs> well, John, I, I, think, I think while this is the most extreme uh, device we've come up with, my mobility and my general just... Uh, I'm just not all there. So I, I think we, we, gotta, we gotta take it down a notch for the next one. <laughs> all right, with that, we are pleased to welcome our fourth, uh, fourth presenter tonight. I'd like to welcome to the stage Julia Snap, Chris Nalo, and Tiffany Crump as they present Dirigible Systems. We're building, <laughs> we're building the world's next billion dollar tech company right here in Carroll County. My name is Julius Knapp, this is Christopher Nalo and Tiffany Crump, and we're the founders of Dirigible Systems, Carroll County's premier fog computing company. But what does that mean? First, you have to understand the problem with cloud computing. As bandwidth and low latency needs increase, the cloud just can't keep up. There are too many hops between you and the service you need. <clears throat> you likely encounter this problem almost every day when you video conference with school, coworkers, friends. You notice a delay between when you speak and you see that your audience has heard you. This, this delay is okay for some applications, but it's just not small enough for today's smart, de smart devices. Where would we be without technical errors? <laughs> so how do we fix this? We bring that cloud closer to the ground, and that's what fog computing essentially does. It puts the resources you need closer to where you live and work. With the fog, you can trust that your critical and time-sensitive data is taking the most direct route to its destination. It also enables capabilities that weren't previously possible, allowing medical professionals to monitor patients remotely, for example, and uh, allowing businesses to interact more closely with their customers. We're able to accomplish this 
when there's a high-speed fiber broadband infrastructure in place to support us. Our servers reside locally on those networks. And our first phase will be built right here in Westminster on the gigabit fiber network with plans to expand to central Maryland and the surrounding area. This is all part of a brand new market that's expected to grow to $4 trillion over the next 10 years. As part of this new market, we'll target a diversity of businesses within Carroll County, autonomous drones for our agricultural industry, Internet of Things management for our manufacturers, and progressive web applications for businesses that want to break free from the app stores. We'll offer a public fog with curated services designed to meet a variety of business needs. We'll also offer some professional services and application development to help businesses leverage the benefits of our FOG, because we, we know we understand this technology better than most right now. And for customers that want their own private instance, we'll offer a, uh, uh, we'll design and deploy a system customized to meet their unique needs. We're already on, on track to generate more than $160,000 in revenue this year, with three employees serving the DOD and some other private customers. We have some additional private customers in Carroll that we'd like to bring on board before the end of the year. And over the next five years, we're expected to surpass $20 million in annual revenue and employ 70 people from Carroll and the surrounding area. And this is our only competition. No big deal. <laughs> but this is why we say we're building the next billion dollar tech company. We know how important this technology is to these companies which are currently moving too slowly in this market. We can beat them to market in Carroll County. More than that, we have a competitive advantage. We have more than 30 years of experience between us, which has given us a great understanding of the technology and the market. Yeah. And it all starts right here with us winning the Carroll Biz Challenge. With the total prize package of the Carroll Biz Challenge, we'll be able to market our first Westminster Fog to, Carol, to, to local businesses attract the attention of venture capitalists, and secure the funding we need to ensure our future growth. And lastly, we'd just like to say thank you to the Carol Biz Challenge and the community uh, who have supported us so much, especially over these past few months. Uh, we really do hope that we can, we can build the next billion dollar tech company right here in Carroll. All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, since you guys are talking tech, we have one of our judges here who is deep into the technology space. So Joe, why don't you take a crack at the first question? All right, so um, you're addressing what sounds like latency. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I just test my latency randomly throughout the day here and there sometimes, and I, I don't know why, but um, I just like to know how fast things are going. And um, you know, it, it, in my office or my home, I'm usually getting latency in 20 milliseconds or less. Mm -hmm. Fog computing comp compared to what I'm seeing, um, how much of a benefit does it offer? And, um, and is, it, is it essentially a CDN that you're, you're building a local CDN, like local content delivery network? It's, so when most of the services you use coming from the cloud are hosted regionally, uh, some in Virginia, Ohio, California. So when you, when you wanna ping those services, um, you're, your data traverses some 30 hops, typically, between here and there. Uh, we want to, as you say, bring the, that content more local to enable faster, faster responses. And typically, uh, you can experience up to five times performance improvement with the fog as compared to the cloud. Okay. But as you get bigger and you have more customers, then isn't it gonna slow down I don't really understand these things, but um, is it going to slow down the speed if you have a lot more customers and then they are farther away? So what we want to achieve is, is a, a density. We want, to, we want you to not be more than a few hops away from okay. the, the fog instance that we've set up locally. So we, we would envision multiple locations. So you will have to invest. Right. And so what is your source of revenue? Hold on. Uh, what is your source of revenue? What is your background? And uh, how many employees do you have? So currently, my background is with the DOD and doing government IT okay. contracting. Um, Chris actually 
Yeah, I've been doing this for 20 years, uh, computer programming. I actually work for Cisco currently. Um, and then we do this stuff, you know, day in and, and day out. I should, probably shouldn't have said I did this for 20 years because now everybody knows how old I am. Uh, <laughs> no shame on that. I'm yeah. 47. <laughs> Um, uh, but I think you also asked about revenue model. Uh, yes, or? how do you make money? How much you're gonna have to pay yourself if you open other hubs? Is that mm -hmm. what you said? Um, who is gonna run them? And do you need to have more employees? And because your curbs, you said you were making, you did 160,000 in revenue this year. What is the profit on that? And and it went up pretty fast. On your, you start drawing on your little graph. So if the Too fall computing many. market is expected to grow at 60, 60 plus percent, depending on who you ask, over the next five years. Um, so it, it, it's it's smoothed out because <clears throat> we're also offering professional services, okay. and so so we're we're you know, supplementing our, our revenue with that. But typically, for prof the professional services we're currently offering, we're uh, profiting 10, 15 percent. Okay. For that. For the um, public for the cloud. 160,000, it's 1015. Right. And what is the operation cost as you get bigger? So as we as we implement the uh, the fog the public fog network, um, mm -hmm. it evens it, it starts to balance out as you as you grow, uh, because as you as you have these uh, locations set up, um, they just you know we, we we implement a service and. Okay, thank you. So I've really just been getting acclimated with the term cloud. What does a person's problem look like if you need a, you know, to default to the fog um, technology? Well, a good uh, example is think of uh, el elderly care. Oh, mine's just not working. All right. It is working. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think of elderly care, like you wanna be home, like you, you can no longer, you know, you don't want to go to an old folks home or anything like that you can put sensors in these and then they'll alert you you know right away like if you're having some sort of medical emergency or or anything like that's just that's just one example uh, another example we've talked about is doing you know autonomous drones for farming you know you don't want that drone to run into a tree you know you could have a swarm of them running out and then them interconnecting and talking to each other so there's a lot of different options that you could do with that I mean, we've talked to a lot of uh, different businesses and, you know, they've expressed, you know, interest like some of the ones that we're, you know, we're, we're talking to now. Like, you know, there's a lot of, you know, until you know it's there, you know, people are like, you know, when you say fog, and when we first started this and we're talking about, nobody, nobody knew what we were talking about. So, you know, you're, you're, you know I tried talking to my mom. She's like, what? <laughs> So I, uh, I actually live and breathe AWS and Azure for uh, my career. Um, when a data center goes down, there's redundancy. Mm -hmm. How are the startup guys going to compete with that redundancy for my $3 billion industry? Why would I choose you right. when Amazon, Azure, Google have this global reach? Right. How are you going to grow from the underdog to that? So for certain applications, uh, we, would, we wouldn't replace the, the cloud, we would uh, enable you to, to offload services mm -hmm. as you know, yeah. if, if we have uh, a system down, down uh, you can always, you have redundancy there. Mm -hmm. But our, <clears throat> as, I, as I mentioned, we, we want to have a certain density. So if, if one location goes down, you're still close to the, you're still closer to the next uh, instance that we've, that we've deployed. Uh, than you are to the cloud. Sure. Um, now, you also mentioned uh, 30 years combined experience. Uh, the gentleman uh, to your left mentioned 20 years personal. I'm not a mathematician, but that leaves 10 years experience. So what, uh, what have you two been doing for the last 10 years? Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> well, so as I mentioned, I've been doing uh, uh, contracting for the DOD, and Tiffany has been uh, supporting us with uh, 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 customer Okay. support and uh, uh, social media. Okay. Now, in the DoD world, there are a lot of extra regulations for hardware configuration, mm -hmm. network mm -hmm. configuration, et cetera. Is that your primary focus for where you're gonna move this industry, <clears throat> especially in Maryland, considering the density of that customer base, or are you looking private industry as your focus, or um, where, where, I mean, you're three people, where are you gonna focus? So we'd, we'd like to focus with our public fog. 
you know, serving, serving the local community here in Carroll and Westminster. All right, I just got a text from Jason and we are out of time. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. Think, John? I feel more Wait. agile. More agile. I got something Wait, you don't have. Wait, what? <laughs> Mine's incomplete. Oh, okay, look, what? Where is it? Do you see it? <laughs> is it? Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. I put it all backwards. <laughs> well, That's, you never know. They're interchangeable. It's, it's more fun that way, right? All right but I'll just talk this way the whole time. Yeah. We'll start back and forth. <laughs> um, I'll, John, I, I, I really do feel like you roll up in a bar in this. People are going to steer clear. I think so. so. I think that's really going to deter so, a lot of people. This is fun, too. <laughs> A lot of value here, here, I think. I think the noise is, a, is definitely something different with this one, but what? but I think this is our best way. <laughs> it's hard to hear. But it is. It is. It is, it is indeed. So, All right. so John, I think that this is probably a keeper. I think the finest of our inventions tonight. But uh, you know, I could suggest a few modifications. But I'm, we'll maybe next year we'll, we'll think of a new way to I'm handle. I'm thinking it. this and the bubble and the pole. Let's be safe. All, co all combined. Yeah. 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 I dig it. Layers of defense. All right, we'll, 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 we'll meet up after where we'll build right. a business plan, okay? All right, it's come to my attention that the sooner I present presenter number five, the sooner I can get out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, it's my great pleasure to present presenter number five, Jeremy Willett, who's going to speak about Willett Family Farm. Welcome to the stage. The tallest structure on our farm is this windmill, constructed in 1874, and it quickly became the logo for our business because a windmill is something that harnesses power to produce something very specific. For my grandfather and my great-grandfather, they used the windmill to harness the power of the wind to grind grain or to pump water. But now in the 21st century, Willett Family Farm has an opportunity to harness the power of agriculture that has been so prevalent here in Carroll County to be able to benefit every member of our community. Let me show you how. You see, I was born right here in Carroll County in 1985, and I grew up on the outskirts of our family farm. Unfortunately, following the death of a family member, I watched as the family farm had to be sold outside of our family. So I graduated from Carroll Community College, and I started my career in the music industry. That took me to over 22 different countries around the world and 48 of the 50 states. But then I did something that not a lot of people from this county do. I moved back here and I moved back to buy our family farm back into the family. Unfortunately, in 2017, a terrible fire took our farmhouse and my family found ourselves with just the clothes on our back. But this experience it also grew us closer to our neighbors as we watched our community rally around us, making sure that every need that we had was taken care of. Later that summer, I was given a unique opportunity to travel to Africa to learn from a group of African farmers that were practicing sustainable agriculture. While I was there, I lived with them in the village. No running water, no electricity, no bathroom facilities. But the one thing that I learned was that every single day in the village, there was a funeral. And these deaths were being caused by the contaminated water that these children had to drink. I left that village that day knowing that when I went back home, I was going to do something about what I saw. You see, our business is located on over 200 acres of farmland that's owned by our family and preserved in agriculture. And we produce things like fruits and vegetables and poultry that we make available on a pay-what-you-can basis to ensure that members of our community have access to nutritious food, whether they can pay for it or not. We then put on agritourism events and farm stays. In fact, here are a few quotes from some of our recent guests. In the past year, we have welcomed over 200 guests from nine different states and two different countries. 
Most of these are families, adults with young kids that come to the farm because they want to collect eggs for the first time. They want to hold rabbits. They want to watch the horses in the pasture. They collect firewood for a campfire and they sleep under the stars. But we also use these opportunities to promote local businesses in town like Boggers Orchard right up the road from us. And then finally, all of our agritourism events are in partnership with Child Fund International, where we give our guests an opportunity to invest in sustainable agriculture in other parts around the world. In fact, this last January, I got to go back to Mozambique to see a project that our family farm helped fund. It was a new clean water well for all of those kids I met. Now, let's talk about the numbers. Our unique pay what you can model is not just some lofty goal. It's actually built on a 13 year career in the live event industry. And as you can see from this chart, for a number of years, we had a set cost for the items that we were selling. But when we changed to a pay what you can model, in one year, we sold over $200,000 worth of product. The other way that we make our money is through farm stays. In fact, tonight while I'm here giving this pitch, there is a family from Philadelphia that paid $50 to sleep under the stars back at my farm right now. And you see, Carroll County and Frederick County are leading the state in the number of farms. And so what we have done as a farm business is we have developed commission-based relationships with companies like HipCamp, who need farm owners. They're actively looking for owners right now to operate their business. And what we do now is we want to connect farmers in Carroll County to these agritourism dollars at no cost to the farmers. We get paid by hip camp. What I want you to leave knowing tonight is this. Willett Family Farm wants to be the windmill that harnesses the power of agritourism in a county that thus far has been pro-agriculture production. We want a vote for Willett Family Farm not just to be for us, but to be for every farmer in Carroll County that is trying to make ends meet in the middle of a pandemic and beyond. Thank you. Excellent. Olen, you're up first. Thank you. Oh my, okay. So I have to disclose that uh, I grew up in Paris and I am not already being in Sexville. It's a stretch for wait, me. Wait, wait, wait. You're it was, French? <laughs> I am. <laughs> and uh, um, so I was so curious, it seems like a little child, to visit the farm. So yesterday, it was yesterday, mm -hmm. I drove with my youngest son to almost any town. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I just wanted to walk around, and, um, and my family likes to camp, so um, I know you have camping, so I got to meet Jeremy for the first time yesterday. And I was very impressed with uh, all of the things that uh, you're doing, because a lot of farmers are, dying, are not making it in Carroll County, and it's very sad. I remember when we bought our house 20 years ago, we had to sign a lot of papers saying we should not complain about the farmer. Like, it, it seems like it was protecting the farmers, but yet we see houses being built on farms and so um, so your source of revenue is hip camp and then you're renting land to um, to other farmers to farm and then what was the third one there was a third one third one is pay what you can uh, produce pay, uh, sell your products um, I did have a ton of questions and I'm being why did you ask me first um, no, I do. Oh, you know, I wanted you to talk a little bit more about the charity. You're giving back. You're learning from what's happening in Africa with all your travels. I'm so jealous. And then, um, and then you are giving back to them. So can you talk a little bit more about this? I would love to. So we do personally give a portion of our profit to Child Fund International help with these projects. But what's so amazing about it is that a lot of the funds are actually coming from the guests that visit our farm because we're providing pictures, stories, and information about each individual child that I met in Mozambique and allowing those guests to sponsor individual children at a time. So they're giving the money directly to Child Fund. We don't touch the money, and they give on a monthly basis to help meet those goals in Mozambique. So if you were to win tonight, what would you do with the money? That's a great question. We want to increase our agritourism events, so we want to purchase a large outdoor tent so that we can put on like Barnstorm Music Festival. Um, Mike McMullen played at it years ago at our farm and a Christmas uh, event. And we wanna purchase the tent so that we don't have to put like sprinklers in the old barn that's over 100 years old. 
uh, because we want to be compliant with the county. So I've, I've actually seen firsthand um, in uh, Uganda um, the use, I don't want to say misuse, of um, donated and sponsored funds instead of going to, directly to the child, going to a larger organization to feed multiple children uh, rather than the sponsored child getting the funds. A hundred kids get a dollar instead of one kid getting a hundred dollars. Um, do you have a, like a, a conversation with your um, customers about the fact that, hey, you might sponsor this child, but if funds are low, it might not go to that child, it might go to everybody. Like, is, is there a transparency there? There definitely is, and that's a great question. So we chose Child Fund International specifically because it's a community-based approach. So if one child in that village has access to that clean drinking water, every member of that community, including the parents and grandparents. So it's communicated actually in the packets, uh, the photo of the child and the story is because they can have a direct relationship with that child, but it's very transparent in that the funds are actually used to benefit the entire community. That's great, thank you. Jeremy, I have a question yes, for you. Well, two. So I have, the first one, I'm looking at your uh, five-year uh, revenue growth projections. Yes, sir. And you have uh, relatively small growth between 2018-19 um, area up until 2023. And then it grows significantly between 2023 and 2025. So my first question is, um, why, you know, why can't that growth happen within the next two years instead of waiting? And uh, the follow-up question is, the growth, almost all of it comes from the agritourism consulting, um, which is 600,000 of your projected 700,000. Why bother with the rest if almost all of it's coming from that one source? Yes, sir, it's a great question. Um, the reason is, uh, to answer your first question, the slow growth is because this presentation was actually put together in the last 72 hours because everything else we were preparing to uh, share with you uh, was changed by the county zoning. And uh, we actually went to the county and were very transparent about what we were doing and hoping to do. And it was there that we learned that if we had more than one campsite on our farm, that we were operating a commercial campground. Uh, we have worked very closely with the zoning department and our commissioners. They have been fantastic, by the way, to work with. We really appreciate their transparency with us. And so what we are planning to do, we're honoring all the reservations that we have currently. But what we're doing is shifting our focus because we as a family farm do not want to become a commercial campground. What we wanna do is have high quality events for a limited number of guests. But what our greatest intention is, is to actually share this idea with other farmers so they can have an introduced revenue stream. So we wanna pour our energy into helping other farmers recognize the potential as well as working with our zoning and commissioners to help understand the benefit of agritourism in Carroll County. From my understanding, it's at the commissioner level that need to define agritourism, and it would be them who have the ability to say, you know what, farmers that have more than you know, 200 acres of land should be allowed to have more than one campsite. It's not a commercial campground. But until we can see some of that policy change, which I hope to work directly with the commissioners on, uh, we wanna be compliant, so we're scaling back that and then pouring our efforts into helping other farmers make money. Are you gonna plan a trip to Africa? Maybe it would be a good idea to offer it to people. <laughs> well, we actually do uh, every year. COVID has been interesting, but I was just yeah. there in January, you saw, and I go at least once a year to see the projects, uh, visit the children. My favorite part is to go and tell the kids they've been sponsored by somebody that visited our farm. Okay. Quick question about your farm staff. Tell us about the folks who work on your farm outside of yourself. Yeah, uh, currently we don't pay any employees and I'm not drawing a salary from the farm business yet. Um, but my wife uh, helps with a lot of the agriculture production um, through gardening and poultry raising. And then my cousin, uh, fourth generation farmer, Jesse, is uh, very active in hay and beef right now. And then um, my dad owns uh, over 80 acres of the farmland that we rent out to local farmers right now. Are you planning to have more events to create more revenue? We would love to. We'd love to do quarterly events. And we want it to be all built around the benefit of agri agriculture, uh, as well as music. We have a music background in our family. Yeah, that's great. All right, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there we have it, five presenters. The presenters almost equaled the audience. Uh, we didn't hear 
anything from Dr. Fauci, and I'm going to assume no news is good news Ex exactly. in that regard, because I assume and, he would have spoken up if there was an issue. And, and, and Vice President Biden and President Trump have, have been very, very polite sitting next yes. to one another. And Governor Hogan, of course, has been a class act over there. So I think yes. we're, we're doing yes. well. Yes. Uh, but folks, it's arrived at the time for us to vote. And by us, we have the judges on the stage. They are going to recess in just a moment to deliberate about the grand prize winner. However, you all who are viewing right now, you have the opportunity to vote. So on your screen will be instructions to text in your vote, and that will happen in just one moment. Uh, we'll get back to you in about 10 minutes. Judges deliberate, you guys vote, text your friends, get everybody you can to engage and vote in this process. And we'll be back in 10 minutes to avail our winners. Thanks All so right. much. We'll see you then. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. and produced by 127 Creative. Tonight's live streaming broadcast is provided by the Community Media Center.
Thank you to all the sponsors of the 2020 Carol Biz Challenge. Our founding sponsors, 127 Creative, Carroll County Economic Development, Community Media Center, Magic, Miller, Resources for Entrepreneurs, Ting, our Platinum Sponsors, Advantage Internet Marketing, BGE, Gage Digital Media, Knorr Break, McDaniel College, Startup Portal, Town Mall of Westminster, and Cone Creative, our Gold Sponsors, Carroll County Public Library, Brown, Schultz, Sheridan, and Fritz, The Entrepreneur Store, The French Twist, Lehigh Cement, NSWB Bank, Penguin Random House, Town of Mount Airy, The City of Tawnytown, The City of Westminster, WTTR Radio, our refreshment sponsors, The Food Chick, Furnace Hills, Julia Novas, Miscellaneous Distillery, Once Upon a Crumb, Velnoski Wealth Management Group, and m and Bank. Thanks again for supporting innovation and entrepreneurship right here in Carroll County, Maryland. The Carroll County Business and Employment Resource Center is your local connection for all of your employment and training needs. We provide complimentary recruitment, retraining, and retention programs to help build your workforce. Burke helps you find the most qualified employees by posting jobs at our center and online, identifying the right candidate for your position, offering skills training, and hosting on-site job fairs. We make connections that work. Contact us today. Dodds, the executive director of Magic. Now what if I told you that right now under my feet is the fastest internet in the entire state of Maryland moving at the speed of light and right here in the middle of Carroll County. Well come take a look. That's what's happening here with the Westminster Fiber Network only in the city of Westminster powered by Ting. Now the reason why Magic exists is because of this fiber network and we're here to help entrepreneurs like yourselves succeed and bring your visions to life. So, congratulations to all the finalists of the Carol Biz Challenge. We look forward to supporting you at Magic. Connect with me here at my email address or website. What I have found over my many years is that most entrepreneurs are just not good business people. They need to learn that skill. But what they bring is the passion and the ideas and the excitement, which is awesome. And that's where Carroll Community College comes in with its unique Miller Resources for Entrepreneurs program. We offer everything an entrepreneur needs to get its business started and to keep it up and running how to start a business, how to write a business plan, all the way up through getting your business marketed on social media. So often business owners are great at their craft, but they're not great at the business of their craft. Me taking the opportunity to embrace all that Miller had to offer was me engaging that side that wasn't the strong side, the business side of running a business. 
After 25 years of working in healthcare food service industry for corporations, it's kind of scary to go out on your own. Miller helped me organize all my random thoughts into a business plan and help identify where I needed to be. Miller provided the structure that I needed in order to make not only a short-term plan, but a long-term plan. Before I knew it, I had a company. Miller is a great resource to help you come up with how to approach the next step in your growth as a business. Congratulations to the contestants and let the competition begin.
are. We're back. We've got uh, we've got some winners. Obviously, I'm holding some some checks. No, no peeking. I already know. No peeking. Um, but uh, before we uh, get to award presentations, we do want to give our judges about 30 seconds to say a few mm -hmm. words. And so we'll we'll go with Dave. You're you're closest to me. Thank so you. You start off. Thank you. So um, I did this a couple of years ago. Uh, it was tough. Everyone did an amazing job. Um, I felt like the presentations were clear. I knew what people were trying to tell me about their business, about themselves. Um, I grilled a couple of you pretty hard because I thought this year we had some really ambitious goals for these businesses and I wanted to hear a little bit more. Um, so that's why I was kind of tough on some of you. Um, but overall, I thought we had five winners and I'm excited to see the rest of the show. Excellent, thank you, Kim. I just really want to say that everyone did an amazing job here. Very ambitious goals, very amb ambitious vision, um, especially in this environment. The fact that you all are here, you're definitely winners. Um, again, I just want to, you know, thank you all for the opportunity to be here and witness, you know, these budding entrepreneurs um, and to see how much success they're going to have. So everyone had amazing pitches, um, but um, you know, you're, you're all winners. So just thank you for the opportunity and thank you all for your courage. Um, to get up here and, and really give your pitch, especially in these, these current times. Excellent. Thank you. Joe? I really enjoyed the diversity of ideas. Um, I think that we had a lot of very different types of pitches today, which made it, which made it hard. It's hard. It's hard to compare such different types of businesses uh, against each other. And um, I will say that everyone, uh, it, was, it wasn't easy picking a winner. And uh, I, I think that there were a lot of really good, every idea up here was a good one. Alain. Yeah, I agree with you. It was really difficult to pick a winner. Um, it was, and just like you said, it was very diverse, uh, so, which makes it a little bit difficult to compare. Um, but I think they're all going to be very good businesses in Carroll County. And I can't wait to see them come alive. I mean, and visit the ones that already are existing. So thank you all so much. You're all right. fantastic judges. And so, so, we'll, uh, so we're almost ready. But yeah. before, because the anticipation is crushing, um, so we'll drag it out, naturally. Uh, I want to make sure that, that we do some, some thank yous. Certainly, uh, thank you to all the sponsors that make this possible. Uh, thank you to 127 Creative for the wonderful production that they do. Uh, thank you very much to Mike McMullen in the Carroll County Chamber of Commerce, one for inviting me back, uh, and speaking for Jason, inviting us back. I had a wonderful time, as always. Uh, I want to thank um, the Carroll Arts Center for hosting us again uh, under these conditions uh, and everybody else who helped make this happen. An awful lot goes into this. Whether we have an audience or not, the show has to go on. Uh, and certainly thank you to the judges uh, and all the members of the production team that were here. So I wanna make sure we say that. Uh, I also want to, to say this. Um, we do understand that COVID is a pandemic, that it's a very serious matter. Uh, and it's resulted in tragedy worldwide. Uh, I hope people take the fun that we had with the social distancing with it in stride. At some point, if you can't laugh in its face a little bit, where are we? So I appreciate everybody's patience with that uh, as we did our thing up here. Awesome with that. Mike McMullen, let's come out here, here and announce our People's Choice it's Award. Time. Don't show anybody. I won't, I won't. It's, it's, it's a delicate balance. I'm using this microphone, I'm assuming, right? Am I on? It's working. Okay. I hope it's working at home. All right. Before I announce this, like all good award shows, we had to run a little bit late. That's good, you know. At least it's not, you know, being up until 11 o'clock at night to see who won. I want to thank, uh, I'd like to thank Jason and John for being amazing MCs. Please give them a round of applause. Oh, thank you. They don't get paid anything for this, obviously, and they do a great job, so I really want to say thanks. I want to thank everybody for watching. This has been a different year, right? Usually this place is packed, and right now it's not, so people are watching from home, and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank all of you who pitched. You guys were all great, and every one of you has got an idea that you can do something with. Trust me. Just have the passion, make it your own, keep it your own, and uh, you will be a success. So... Mike, Mike, I forgot to thank the VIPs. 
Oh, the VIPs, that's right, we do have to thank them. I don't know if the lighting's quite as good as it needed to be to see this on uh, television, but they're all sitting right here, and it's an honor to be with the governor, uh, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President, my wife, Marsha, Dr. Fauci, and Mark Cuban, so it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I like that. All right, so, People's Choice Award, $1,000. It was very, very close, but I'm proud and happy to present this to Covalent Spirits. Come on up here. Here they come. Can I have you guys give a short little speech? Come up to the microphone. We'll get a picture. Is anybody taking pictures? No, we're doing that after. All right, we'll do that afterwards. You guys hold your check. I should probably have my mask on. I'm sorry about that. So we just want to thank everybody out there online. Obviously, the voting this year was tremendous from everybody. We want to thank our judges, uh, sponsors, everyone who helped put this on, all the people that were local to encourage us. Uh, we're really excited about this concept. And we really want to put a shout out there to all the Facebook and texters and everyone else who, who, who helped us get this. So thank you. Thank you awesome. very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Can you hold this? Can you handle this big check? I think so. All right. It's always a lot of fun to present the big check. Now, when you win this, okay, you can't just take this to the bank, all right? This is just, you know, just so you know that. So this goes on the wall for you. So as, as everybody said, we had five very different ideas. So it's hard to compare one to another, but uh, I think this, this person gave an amazing pitch in an area like Carroll that's so heavily suited to agriculture. I'm very happy to present this to Willett Family Farms. And guys, thank you so much. Um, I want to say that this is for my son and my daughter. Um, my son, at lunch uh, two days ago, he said to me, he said, uh, he calls me Papa, he said, Papa, if you don't win this, uh, you're not just letting me down, you're letting the entire family down. That's what he said. <laughs> so, Evans, this is for you, okay? And, um, but honestly, I just wanted to say, um, both of my children are black. Uh, they are from Africa. Uh, they were uh, brought to our family through international adoption, and they are amazing, amazing children. And um, this is a tough time in America to raise black children right now. And um, we've had very, very interesting conversations as a family, but I am so proud that our goal as a family has become to pay off the farm one day and to one day take the keys and hand it off to our kids making them the first black owners of Willett Family Farm in over a century. And there is a huge disproportion in land ownership between white and black communities. And this is one way that we're gonna change that. So this is a start. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Congratulations. All right, congratulations to Willett Family, Far Family Farm and Covalent Spirits. And with that, we wish every single one of the 29 applicants and the five finalists tonight the best of luck and good fortune as you guys build a business in one of the toughest times uh, in history. But know that this community here, Carroll, has your back. We'll see you guys back here for the 10th Annual Carroll mm -hmm. Biz Challenge. Get your business ideas ready. See you. Thank you. 10.